All right, this is Mr. Wyrick. Gonna go over a couple things with you this morning to catch through the second half of the 1-6 notes. So uh, yesterday, uh, hopefully you were here, we did a whole bunch of coin flips. We tracked the number of heads. We compiled a bunch of results from classes. So hopefully you ended up with a graph that looked something like this. And you can kind of see that bell curve there. We get the increase, we get the decrease. Is it perfect? No. Um, I had this one, I kind of added in results from a whole bunch of classes to kind of get where we were. But you know, you, you end up with something that's, that's relatively well distributed, okay? Um, in the notes for day two, there's gonna be a YouTube link. Make sure you follow that YouTube link. Watch the first two and a half minutes of the video. You don't need to watch the whole thing, that's too crazy. Okay, um, so this is a normal distribution. Make sure to add that to your notes. It's also known to a, also known as a standard distribution or a bell curve. Make sure you write those down. Um, and again, like comparing to our graph, our graph looks pretty close to that if you get the zoom just right. So this is what we would kind of expect to happen over time. We have the mean and all the stuff is kind of collected around the mean and the further you get from the mean on both sides, um, the, the less times something is going to happen, okay? The other things you need to start adding into your notes. Um, this is standard deviation on the standard distribution, okay? This is not the same as like our box plot where we're just cutting up the data into parts we have gone through and we've calculated the standard deviation and we're looking to see where that happens. So this is one standard deviation on each side. It's 68% of the values within one standard deviation. If we're going just one standard deviation above the mean, that should be 34%. If you're going just one standard deviation below the mean, that should also be 34%. So it's 68% total in there. Okay, when we have two standard deviations, this should be 95% of the data. So if you're quick on the subtraction there, uh, that would be 95% um, minus 68%. So that'd be 27% uh, split between these two. Um, so this one's gonna be 13.5%, this one's gonna be 13.5%, okay? Make sure you get those divisions just right. That's gonna be important today. And then um, here on slide number nine, we have 99.7% of the values are within three standard deviations of the mean. So if you're more than three standard deviations away in either direction, that's very exceptional. Either exceptionally good or exceptionally bad. Um, but this is still, uh, it's very exceptional. Uh, 95 taken away from 99.7 is gonna be 4.7% to split between these two. So that's 2.35% right here and 2.35% right here, okay? So when we interpret the graphs here, um, it tells us uh, the mean is 3.39 kilograms, standard deviation is 0.55 kilograms. So uh, we have the mean weight. I mean, it's, it's a little above what we would expect from the bell curve, but this still looks pretty good, okay? Uh, within one standard deviation, 68%. Within two standard deviations, 95%. Within three standard deviations should be uh, 997 Okay, so it, it's going to come together real quick. The reason why we have some down here is these are those very, very premature babies, but we don't have that reflection out here is if the babies get that big, they usually just do a C-section and save the mother some time and effort. So the empirical rule, uh, this is something else you need to add to your notes. That's the balance of having that 68%, 95%, 99.7%. If we have the bell curve, the normal distribution, you can predict how likely something is to happen. And this is gonna be the thing that carries us over uh, from where we're doing statistics into where we are working on probability, okay? So make sure you understand this. Make sure you have those percentages. There should be, I believe, a Delta Math assignment for today. Uh, good luck.
and have a great weekend.